In this video, I'm going to show you some objectively cool things Heptabase lets you do with passages you highlight in a PDF. In my view, Heptabase currently offers the best options when it comes to working with PDF highlights, better than Obsidian, LogSeq, and the many apps like them. I won't be comparing Heptabase to those other apps in this video. That's something I hope to do in a future one, perhaps. Just so you know, I am part of what is called the Heptabase Affiliate Program. This doesn't mean I work for Heptabase, but it does mean the following two things. First, if you use the link beneath this video to try out Heptabase and end up signing up for a Heptabase subscription, I will get a cut of that. Second, since I could benefit financially from you using that affiliate link, you don't really know whether the reason I've taken the time to make this video is that I am actually an enthusiastic user of Heptabase or whether I'm just trying to make a few bucks. But seriously, I am an enthusiastic user of Heptabase. But again, you don't know whether that's true. Just watch the video. You'll see whether you like the app. Here I am on a whiteboard for a project I'm working on about the social conditions that need to be in place for people to live good or happy or flourishing lives. I've already added to the board a card that has on it links to two PDFs that I'm going to be pulling highlighted passages from. Getting PDFs into Heptabase is easy. You simply drag and drop a PDF onto a board. Once you've done that, the PDF is in Heptabase. And at that point, you can go ahead and remove the instance of the PDF that's on the board you dragged it onto which will remove the PDF from the board without deleting it from your Heptabase. See, even though I just removed it from this board, it's still here. As you can see in these two notes underneath this card, when you click on a PDF link, you can have it open as a hover window or in the right sidebar. I'm gonna use the second of these two options. I'm gonna hold down the option key while I click this PDF link, and now the PDF is open in the right sidebar. The text of the PDF is a little small here. I can increase the size of the PDF in three ways. First, I can click on this plus button to get the PDF to be bigger. But if I know I want the PDF to take up all the space in the right sidebar, I can click on this fit width button. The third thing I can do is expand the size of the right sidebar, which you might wanna do if the text is still too small even after you've hit the fit width button. I'm gonna start by showing you what it looks like to drag and drop a highlighted passage from a PDF and discuss some of the options you have after you have done so. A little bit later, we will look at the options you have when you create a new highlight or click on an existing one. This PDF already contains some highlighted passages. Just to be clear, these are passages I have highlighted while using Heptabase's built-in PDF app. If you want to be able to add highlighted passages from a PDF to Heptabase, you have to highlight those passages within Heptabase. You can't highlight the PDF using some other app, upload that PDF to Heptabase, and then drag the highlighted passages from the PDF to a board or a card in Heptabase. I'm gonna click on this highlight, drag it over to the board, unclick my mouse, and then, as you can see, the highlight gets added to the board. The first thing to take note of here is that when you drag a highlighted passage from a PDF, you get not only the passage, but also the title of the PDF, as you can see at the top here. The second thing to take note of is that the highlight has to the left of it a vertical line in the same color as the highlighter pen used to highlight the passage. For those of you who use different highlight colors to mean different things, this might be a particularly useful feature. If you hover your cursor over the highlighted passage, three buttons get disclosed at the top right. The first one is the Locate Highlight button. Clicking on it will take you back to the precise location in a PDF that the highlighted passage is from. The second button here is the Copy Content button. If I click on it and then paste the content into either a card or a text box, what I get is the passage in the form of a quote block. We no longer see the title of the PDF the passage was taken from. However, if you click on the View Source link here, you'll be taken to the PDF the passage is from. If you want to be able to see the title of the PDF without clicking on the View Source link, you have the option of clicking inside the quotation and adding a link to the PDF. You could also add here a page number if you want. The fact that you can edit highlighted passages pulled from a PDF is, as I see it, a major plus of using Heptabase. One reason this is a valuable feature is that it allows you to make changes to a highlight that comes from a PDF that hasn't been, or simply can't be, OCR'd well enough. OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. Sometimes it doesn't matter how well a PDF has been OCR'd. No matter how many times you try to re-highlight lines from the PDF, the text that gets highlighted will not be identical to the text that appears when you drag and drop the highlight onto a board or card. You can edit the passages not only when they look like this, but also when they look like this. 
If you make changes to a highlight that looks like this, those changes will get reflected in all the other instances of this highlight that you might have in Heptabase. Put differently, any changes you make in this instance of the highlight will get synced with all other instances of the same highlight. If you want to make changes to a highlight without affecting the other instances of it, then use this option up here. Let me show you an example of the difference between these two options and explain why in some cases you might want to use one rather than the other. As you can see, I have here three instances of the exact same highlight. It's these two down here that are synced with each other. So any change I make to one will be made to the other. In some cases, I want to make changes to a highlight that gets synced with all other instances of that highlight. For example, there might be a problem with the text that appears when a highlight is dragged from a PDF, especially one that hasn't been OCR'd well. I can make a correction and it will be made in all other instances of the highlight. Or maybe it's useful to me to have a particular thinker's name emphasized in every instance of a highlighted passage. However, I really like having the other option available as well. That's because for one project I'm working on, I might want to put this part of the passage in italics or boldface type, since that's the stuff that's relevant to that particular project. For a different project that uses the same passage, I can place different parts of the highlight in italics or boldface type. Another way of modifying highlighted passages so that their most relevant parts stand out is simply to delete everything in the highlight that is not really relevant to whatever project you're working on. All right, so we've looked at the locate highlight and copy content buttons here. This last one, the three dots that represent more, pulls up a menu of options to choose from, including the two we just looked at. You can pull up this same menu by right-clicking on the highlight here. The only option listed here that I think it's worth commenting on for this video is that if you select not the copy content option, but instead the copy option, then that will copy this whole thing. That is, it will put on your clipboard a replica of this, as you can see when I paste it here. So far, I have shown you the various options you have when you drag an already highlighted passage onto a board or a card. Let's now look at the options you have each time you either click on a highlighted passage in the PDF itself or highlight a new passage. So I'm gonna highlight a new passage here. I'll select a passage by dragging the cursor along it. When I unclick on my mouse, I'm presented with a range of options. First, I can choose what color the highlight will be. If you're someone who uses more than one or two colors when highlighting a document, the steps I just now went through will probably be the ones you'll want to use most of the time. However, if you use just one or two highlight colors, you might want to click on the pen button down here. When you do that, your highlights will remain the same color until you decide to change to a different color. A second option you have after selecting a piece of text is to add a note to the text you've highlighted. This is something you can do in some, but not all, PDF annotation apps. I think it's great that Heptabase offers this feature. When you add a highlight to a board or card, the notes you put here come along with it. Let's now focus on these three buttons. They give you three different options for incorporating a highlighted passage into a project you're working on. First, you can click on this whiteboard button and the highlighted passage will be automatically added to the whiteboard that you currently have open. You could just as well drag the highlighted passage onto the board, but some people might prefer to use this button if they have a bunch of highlighted passages they want to add to a board before they take the time to move those passages around on the board. Second, you can click on this copy highlight button. After doing so, you can then paste that highlight in a card. Alternatively, you can right-click on the board, select text, and then paste the highlight within the rectangle that gets created. Third, if all you want is just a link that will take you back to this highlight inside the PDF, click on the Copy Link button. Once you've done that, you have three options to consider when you paste the link within a card or a text box. First, you can paste the highlighted passage as an embed. If you choose that option, what happens is the exact same thing that happens when you click on the whiteboard button to add a highlighted passage to the board you're working on. I guess it's nice to have this option presented if, after copying the link to the passage, you change your mind and want to embed the passage instead. Second, you can select Paste as Mention. When you do that, you get a rectangle containing the title of the PDF and the first few words of the highlighted passage. You can then click on that rectangle to be taken back to the place in the PDF the passage was taken from. For whatever it's worth, I never use this option. I like the way these little rectangles look, but I almost always want to see more than just the first few words in a highlighted passage. Third, you can select Dismiss. Doing this leaves you with a long, ugly link. 
I actually like having this option. No, I don't add such a link to a card or a board. Instead, I sometimes want to type something like, see also this passage from Kraut 1979. Select the words this passage, and then paste the URL of the highlighted passage, which turns the words this passage into a link back to a specific highlight in a PDF. We've now covered what I take to be the most important aspects of working with PDF highlights in Heptabase. I'll conclude by pointing out one more feature that might be of use to some of you. If you're someone who wants to grab images, tables, charts, and so on from PDFs, you can use the Area Highlight button to do that. Basically, when you click on that button and draw a box around something, Heptabase takes a screenshot of it. You can then paste that screenshot onto a card or a board, and a link back to where you got the image or table or whatever will be placed under the screenshot. All right, I hope this video has helped you see the various ways you can work with highlighted passages in Heptabase. Again, if you want to give Heptabase a spin, consider using the affiliate link that I have placed under this video. My expectation is that maybe three of you will do this so that I'll make just enough money so as to require that I report the income on my tax return and thus make doing my taxes more nightmarish than is usually the case. Thanks, everyone. See you in the next video.